Greed is a mental illness of suffering. It is an affliction of the senses. And there are many names for greed, such as wanting, craving, lusting, and desire. The meaning of desire is hoping for the attainment of something. People are tied together by their bodies and their minds. Their bodies are of paramount importance to them. The impulses of pursuing or craving for something by people is what can tie people together in the realm of the senses. And they find it is to be of pure paramount importance. Craving for forms of sight, smells, tastes, sounds and touch in the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue and in tactility. The, the body then tends to crave textures. If there is a positiveness to greed, it's about the things you like, which is the opposite to the things that attract hatred. But if you want to talk about the root cause of our afflictions and suffering, as the Buddha taught in the Second Noble Truth, that it all comes from greed. The greed, the grasping, and craving that tends to vex people. The biggest reason for greed is that people cannot do without eating. They cannot do without sleeping. They cannot do without using their eyes for seeing or their ears for hearing sounds. In moderation, all these things are not a problem. But excessive cravings and greed, if pursued, can be simply exhausting. Greed is when we want things that we are not that are not needed. The trouble is people want too many things. When we sleep, we need a bed. When we eat, we need food and we need to put aside for the future. But in many cases, this becomes excessive. And people find themselves in a state of constant craving. This can bring suffering and dissatisfaction to the mind. This problem is called insatiability. It is a problem, as many people tend to want what is not theirs, and they hope to hold it forever. And when they do get something, they're afraid of losing it, which in turn causes suffering. In today's socio-economic society, people require money. People think they require more and more, and especially more than the person next door. This is greed. Yes, it is good to put aside for some future need. But people are afraid of losing what they have just acquired. These objects of craving, they cannot be held forever. The trouble is there can be no limit to craving. Craving can cause exhaustion. It is a vexation people become exhausted by their greed. People die for the attainment of riches. It's almost like a competition. He who dies with the most toys wins. But wins what?
many people are constantly pursuing and pursuing. This can cause friction between people. It can cause disasters and reduce the matter of harmony between people, between family members and between people in the social environment. Constant craving, competing with others, contending and contending puts us a bit out of touch with the harmony of nature and brings difficulty upon so many people, all because of greed. Obtaining and using a moderate number of things that require for us to live a healthy life, both physically and spiritually, and to do this in a state of emotional comfort is not greed. We do not live in the Garden of Eden, where all our daily needs are supplied. We live in a world that is driven by our social and economic pressures. So we need the products to run our businesses. We need the materials to do our job. So to provide for the welfare of ourselves and our families. This is not greed. This is a necessity in today's modern and constantly changing world of our environment. Greed is when we look for the excess. When people have cravings and endless wanting, then people intend to indulge, indulge to excess. They shop through greed. And then there's the next generation. This is training them to think that this is what life looks like. When in reality, what we are transmitting to them is simply desire without limit. We need to have the wisdom to distinguish between what is required, what is craving and greed. When we start to talk about an appropriate amount of food, transport, accommodation, etc., we need to figure out what is appropriate. In all reality, we need very little. Besides individual needs, however, we must take into consideration also the needs of others and of the whole society. We need to have the, the wisdom to differentiate between comfortably adequate and excessive indulgence. Selfishness is related to greed. Selfishness is the opposite of the two pillars of Buddhist practice on which Buddhism was originally founded. That is the practice of compassion and generosity. Selfishness can go beyond the craving of material gain and into the realms of emotional and psychological manipulation and control of others' affections, feelings, and even an attempt to control others' thoughts. This is a dastardly form of greed. Today we see our planet suffering an insatiable greed and selfishness of mankind. The climate is changing. 
species are becoming extinct. The environment is being transformed and in many cases desolated by lusting, craving, greed and attachments to excessive indulgence. This relates to the second noble truth of the Buddha. And today is the cause is causing the suffering of our world. So where does the answer lie? It has to lie with the individual. We have to almost interrogate ourselves to see what our needs are and what are our indulgence and how our indulgence is causing the extinguishment of lives in the natural world around us. We need to become mindful of our actions, become mindful of our decisions and to find the balance in our hearts and minds between peace, harmony, personal comfort and a life lived to excess that causes the suffering of others. And remember, every action has a reaction. Everybody is responsible for their own actions. Everybody's karma is their own. Thank you for taking the time to listen.